She supported giving taxpayer-funded coverage to illegals. So while you can't afford to go on vacation with your family, she wants to raise your taxes to pay for health coverage for foreigners. She co-sponsored legislation to protect criminals, hardened criminals, from being deported back to their country of origin. Kamala Harris and her team worked quietly with Barack Hussein Obama and Chuck U. Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and the New York Times, and they launched a coup against a sitting president, and she knew about his condition. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well, no matter where you're tuning in from. In today's video, we're diving into a powerful segment from Charlie Kirk's show that really caught my attention. It's packed with insightful points that I think you'll find both engaging and thought-provoking. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. You're living through right now a sugar high. There is a Democrat sugar high, and it's going to last a couple weeks. It could even last a month. You see, for over 18 months, the Democrat base has been very sleepy. Not excited about Joe Biden, upset that Donald Trump very well might become the next president. Many of them have even resigned to the fact that Trump was going to become president, especially after that debate. The elevation of Kamala Harris from vice president to the candidate has unleashed an expected and anticipated sugar high. No different than if you were seven years old and you ate a bunch of Twizzlers and Snicker bars and Hershey candy bars and you have all this energy, but it goes away after about 45 minutes. And that crash is a real one. You are seeing a honeymoon period by the media. When we get an opportunity to expose the record of Kamala Harris, the honeymoon period will fade. But make no mistake, you are about to see a series of polls, a series of news items that show that this is a very close race, and it very well might end up being a very close race. Kamala Harris very well might choose Josh Shapiro as her vice president, or Mark Kelly, and that would make Arizona far more in play than it is right now. And we are doing the work on the ground in Arizona every single day. The entire race has reset. Now, remember, she was ranked the most liberal U.S. senator when she was in the Senate. She ranked and scored to the left of Bernie Sanders. She believes in giving free benefits to illegal aliens. She wants to abolish ICE. She wants to make critical race theory the curriculum of the land. She applauded the defunding of police. She wanted to ban all fossil fuels, get rid of the filibuster. She wants to get rid of fracking. Her staff has some of the highest turnover we've ever seen in Washington, D.C. Kamala Harris' staff exodus, 92% gone in three years. Anybody that has been around Kamala Harris knows that she is a... See, Kamala Harris is on TikTok right now, dancing to the new trend. Daisy educated me on it. As Kamala Harris is dancing, Americans are dying of opioid overdoses. As Kamala Harris is dancing, trying to win over Gen Z voters, our border remains wide open. So what does this honeymoon period look like? Well, first of which, Reuters came out with a poll yesterday and shows that Kamala Harris is up two points on Donald Trump. You might say, oh, I don't believe that. This is going to be a much closer race than a lot of you are comfortable with. This is going to be a much closer race than you would have imagined with Joe Biden. This is going to come down to 5,000 votes here, 300 votes here, 200 votes here, which goes to show that every single one of you deciding whether to do the work to find new voters or not is going to be more consequential than ever before. And that is why I'm wearing the shirt, find new voters. Every day you go out into the streets, you go to the grocery store and you find a voter or two. You find two people and you talk to them. Here are 17 examples of Kamala Harris's Marxist communist far left record. She co-sponsored legislation to protect criminals, hardened criminals, from being deported back to their country of origin. She backed Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All legislation, universal health care. She backed banning private health insurance. If you guys like your health insurance, she wants to take it from you. She supported giving taxpayer-funded coverage to illegals. So while you can't afford to go on vacation with your family, she wants to raise your taxes to pay for health coverage for foreigners. She has vocally supported banning all fracking, which would 
result in millions of job losses, including hundreds of thousands of good-paying jobs in Pennsylvania. She backed defunding the police and getting rid of all the police. She has compared ICE, which does amazing work, identifying people that, for example, they killed who, the person who killed Lake and Riley or the mother of five in Maryland. She said the ICE is similar to the KKK. She wants to ban plastic straws, but not ban late-term abortion. She wants and has defended banning offshore drilling. She wants to undo Donald Trump's border security measure. She has supported decriminalizing and allowing illegal border crossings, calling it a civil offense, not a criminal offense. She said she wouldn't treat illegal aliens as criminals. She has called for starting ICE from scratch and get rid of all immigration customs and enforcement. She argued that temporarily closing the border when fentanyl drugs and opioids are coming across and killing our people violates federal law. She went out of her way and raised money for the Minnesota Freedom Fund, a far left organization that pays to bail out and jail violent criminals, including accused murderers and rapists. She supported vocally cuts to Los Angeles's police department. She called efforts to add more police to the streets wrong-headed thinking. Kamala Harris was America's most liberal senator. She is a California communist. Let's talk about what's really going on with our politicians, especially when it comes to someone like Kamala Harris. It's frustrating, isn't it? So many of these leaders seem more focused on fighting wars abroad, protecting other countries' borders, than dealing with the crises we face here at home. We've got a homelessness epidemic, a fentanyl crisis claiming over 100,000 American lives each year, and an unchecked southern border that's letting in over 2 million people annually illegally. I might add, to put that in perspective, that's about the same population as Philadelphia, the sixth largest city in America. And as Charlie Kirk pointed out, this is costing taxpayers over $200 billion a year just to provide housing, food, and Medicare to those entering illegally. Imagine how much of that $200 billion could be used to actually secure our own border. Instead, we're essentially enriching the cartels that control the southern border. They're profiting from every person who crosses. And let's not forget the horrific sex trafficking that goes on there as well. We've got enough issues here at home without worrying about borders on the other side of the world. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're also dealing with soaring gas prices, inflation in a housing market that's become nearly impossible for young people to break into. The Democrats seem to have set it up so that you'll own nothing and be expected to be happy about it. It's clear these politicians don't have our best interests at heart. But there's one thing they're right about, and I'll break down the poll numbers at the end of the video. I'll also share what I think needs to happen next, especially after everything we've seen, like the recent shooting. It's moments like these that should have driven people to vote in massive numbers for Trump. I believe that could still happen. I'll explain why as we wrap up. She is a liberal that makes Gavin Newsom look like a moderate. And by the way, I'm not even touching the surface about how she probably supports, we don't have her on the record yet, state-sanctioned kidnapping of children under the trans agenda. Where does Kamala Harris stand on puberty blockers for 11-year-olds? Where does Kamala Harris stand on taxpayer-funded abortions? Kamala Harris is a cold cruel, cunning opportunist. She couldn't care less about the suffering of Gen Z not being able to own a home. She could not care less. She does not have the sympathy or the empathy about the 110,000 plus Americans that died from drug overdoses. Kamala Harris knew that Joe Biden was sick and not up to the task. And she worked with Obama, Pelosi, and Schumer and led him to the slaughter and is now taking his throne. In fact, this is something we're hearing more and more in focus groups from voters on the ground. Play cut 110. I think that if the DNC would have taken this path maybe two months ago when these same problems existed, I might have leaned towards Kamala, uh, our vice president. Now, knowing the things that they've been hiding in plain sight from the American public, I cannot find it in myself to vote for a Democrat, and potentially I might never vote for a Democrat again. Good for you. This guy's an honest person, and I hope that there are millions of honest people that think the same way.
Kamala Harris is a coup plotter. Kamala Harris is the Brutus to Joe Biden's Caesar. Kamala Harris was part of a shadow campaign. It's so obvious. On debate night, she wasn't there with Joe Biden. The aesthetics and the visual showed her awfully presidential. She was ready for this, but she allowed the process to play out. Kamala Harris and her team worked quietly with Barack Hussein Obama and Chuck U. Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and the New York Times, and they launched a coup against a sitting president, and she knew about his condition. Let's break down the latest numbers from the new Emerson State Poll. Donald Trump is leading by six points in Arizona against Kamala Harris, has a tight two-point lead in Georgia, and is barely ahead by one point in Michigan. Wisconsin is essentially tied, which isn't surprising given how tricky it is to poll in that state. Kamala Harris, meanwhile, is targeting black voters, suburban women, and Gen Z, even taking to TikTok with those viral dance trends to win them over. But here's where things get interesting. Trump actually saw a drop in support from white working class voters in 20 compared to 2016, which is surprising since you'd think that would be a strong. This data really caught my eye because it goes against what many might expect. The decline in white voter turnout in 2020 is significant and something to keep an eye on for 2024. So if you're planning to vote, make sure you follow through. There are plenty of people who identify as pro-Trump or conservative, but don't actually make it to the polls, according to this probably young. Young women tend to be more diligent when it comes to voting. So if you're a young guy watching this, don't just talk the talk. Make sure you cast your vote. Don't assume this will be an easy win for your side. I wish we had a better voting system, like in-person voting on a national holiday where you have to show ID, but we're working with what we've got, so it's... As Charlie Kirk pointed out, this election is going to be much closer than people think, with key states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin likely deciding the outcome. The Democrats have massive, well-funded operations for ballot chasing and voter registration that can really impact the race. And let's not forget Kamala Harris's stance on giving amnesty to illegal immigrants. It's all about getting more voters, people who will naturally support the party that's providing them with free food, housing, and Medicare. If you're diligent and take action, you can make a difference in this tight race. Charlie Kirk really nailed it in this video, bringing up some critical points that we all need to consider. If you found this discussion valuable, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, everyone.